Yeah, I've been passing off uh, this, this Google Maps image I pulled up on a tablet to the rest of the back row. And like, mm -hmm. I love Google Earth for this because it's, you know, you, you can see the islands whenever, whenever you want because they're above water, but there's so much more of them below the, below the water line. Yeah. Whole I, volcanic platform mm -hmm. and a whole history of growth and, you know, collapse and, and Oahu uh, is an especially, <laughs> right, especially interesting uh, volcanic history. I believe also the Kaena, the, the, the third volcano associated with Oh yeah, the, West Kaena. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some also, colleagues have been looking for that. Yeah, interesting. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's actually a gap between Oahu and uh, Kauai that is a little bit anomalously large compared to the spacing of the younger islands. So it's mm. been speculated that there's probably a, uh, a, a volcano uh, between Kauai and uh, Oahu that never really breached uh, sea level, may not have really lasted that long. And mm. yeah, I, I have some colleagues who are, who've been uh, sampling that area with uh, oh. you know, like short little cruises out on the KM and uh, uh, very getting cool. some rocks up that way and yeah, yeah seeing if they can uh, uh, learn a little more about why there's that large gap between the two. Amazing. I haven't followed up on that in a while so I may have to go check out Google Scholar see if uh, any of that's been published. Would they also be using isotopes? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Is there isotopes any other way? <laughs> Is there any other way? Come on. Come on, Virginia. Isotope stories coming to uh, local bookstores <laughs> near you. Probably in 2035, <laughs> 2036, but uh, yeah. you can pre order now. Oh, wow. oh amazing. Oh, fascinating. Yeah. Also, if you look on the Big Island, there's some interesting falls over there, too, and some, I want to say, uh, flank scars. Oh. Is that correct, Dr. Val? Um, forget the name of them, but they're off of um, the Kilauea area. Mm -hmm. And so. I remember one time in my uh, geo-oceanography class, like they, or one of our assignments was to find the names of all of them, and I, uh, unfortunately, I forget some of them, but I just remember see seeing this. I'm like, wow, there's so much more on the bathymetry mm -hmm. than I thought. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of get lost to the bathymetry sometimes. There's just so much to look at, so much mm -hmm. that I want to learn, so much that I want to go sample all over the Pacific. It's so do, wide do encourage viewers. Uh, you know, I was that was so amazing. I really enjoyed just just uh, having Dr. Val point out some of the amazing formations, geological volcanic formations that are um, that are underwater, um, but that help explain how the Hawaiian Islands have uh, gotten their shape, have gotten their features above above the surface, and uh, why those islands are spaced out the way they are, and. Uh, you know why we get such great surf and uh, <laughs> lots of lots of lots of other things. Uh, ex you know that this is all connected. So, really uh, encourage you to go on Google Earth, check out uh, the main Hawaiian Islands, and also um, scroll on over to the north and west and uh, come see if you can see if you can spot us. See if they've updated their satellite imagery in the last week or so. <laughs> find the Nautilus out here. <laughs> We are getting closer, just a couple hundred meters to acquiring the bottom here. And uh, excited, excited for what, uh, what we're going to get to see. One thing I didn't look at on Google Earth, maybe uh, viewers online will have a look at it uh, on my behalf. Um, one of our most uh, dangerous and treacherous channels to cross on our canoes in, uh, in Hawaii is the Alenui Haha. Alenui Haha that passes between uh, Kukui's home island of Maui and her adopted home island of Mokuakeawe and uh, just incredible sitting between the towering Haleakala and, and all of the volcanoes of Mokuakeawe um, and the wind and the water 
um, rip through that deep channel so incredibly fast. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I have another chance, I'm going to pull up Google Earth and see just what's going on down there. The downwind paddle conditions. <laughs> yeah, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Our Pai Aina, definitely, they reveal such a great classroom um, with all of the channels in between all of our islands, our different islands. I mean, each has many tales associated with it. Different paddling races. Um, some people will sail around all of the main Hawaiian islands and sailing va'a, paddling va'a. So there's a lot of different um, ways that we're connected to them and a lot of different stories that we've heard over you know, the course of time. Um, different relationships between certain people and different channels. So Alanui Haha is actually means the great billowing channel. Um, you know, I've just heard of some of our canoes going through them and just how they can easily get swamped by um, the swell. And, mm. you know, there's been a ship actually that was lost out there in between uh, Maui and Mokuokeave, Hawaii Island, years ago. Um, it really? was a U it was a University of Hawaii research vessel. I forgot the name of it. I need to actually look it up. Oh my gosh. I don't recall hearing about this. That's interesting. Yeah, okay. me either. Oh my gosh. It was Here we go. The Google a few the Google decades is coming. ago. But let's see. Oh, I think I might have found uh disappearance. Holo holo is holo yep. holo, yeah. Uh fortieth anniversary? No, when was that? Let's oh see. wow. Of a UH research ship forty years ago. This was uh it's been forty almost forty five years now. But a group of scientists from the University of Hawaii and, and University of California and NOAA. Uh, oh my gosh. We're on the M at 90 foot, MS Holo Holo. And uh, doing uh, oceanographic research. Lost at sea. Wow. December 9th, 1978. They remain wow. a mystery even to this day. What an incredible story. I encourage, uh, mm -hmm. encourage all of our viewers to have a look at the MS Holo Holo. And we should ask Hans what he knows about this. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of it. Me either. But lost in the dangerous waters of Ale Nui Ha Ha Channel. Yeah, yeah, so yeah those channels incredible. are no joke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Incredible. You guys wow. see this little fish on her cam? Yeah, yeah. Oh. just kind of hanging hey, out. Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh. Aww. Nice to meet you. Oh, Aww. okay. All right. Yeah, amazing to think of the ties between uh, all of the all of the various stories of challenge and bravery and adventure crossing uh, the various channels between the islands of Hawaii and and uh, all, all of. Oh. I think you have muted. Uh, we can hear you. All of the legends that were uh, that were made uh, across those channels and and those connections to our volcanic history and uh, our geology and and uh, the formation of these islands and uh, out in the middle of the Pacific, uh, the world's most remote archipelago.
coming up on just under 150 meters to the bottom. So we're starting to pick up some of the seamount on the sonar on the left. Oh, I see it. <laughs> Thank you, Catalina. We have Asako joining us over in science chat. She is very excited to be with us today, especially given this is an unexplored seamount. We have no idea what we'll encounter. Mm -hmm. That might be that uh, cliff face showing up in the sonar that we're going to be kind of traversing as I part of this dive I believe you're point. right. Fascinating. Yeah. Rennie, Val, Megan, Daniel didn't pick the easiest walk up this uh, up this gyo. This is uh, hey, this Virginia is was the, involved too. Uh, it was a whole team too? effort. Maybe yep, Virginia mm -hmm. too. This is quite the adventurous climb. I'm looking forward to it. But hey, I was the, I was the one who was really kind of getting stuck on the uh, on the poly feature. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go take a look. In. Let's just clip in and uh, you know have a go. Yeah. We'll send them. It's a, it's a pretty long track, but I figure there you know there probably won't be too many places to sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, cliff part of the traverse. And uh, we may have some areas on, on top of the seamount where we might just fly if it's uh, uh, pretty much sediment, so. Yeah. Let's see what goes. Yeah, we're gonna see how it goes. Incredible to think we're, uh, we're we're only halfway through the Ala Amuana Kaiuli, this uh, very special expedition into Papahanaumokuakea. We'll have uh, just over two weeks left on board together, and yeah. at least ten or eleven more days of uh, of exploring to do. Quite a few mm -hmm. more sea mounts uh, mm -hmm. that we should get to dive on. So we hope you'll those of you who are tuning in on Nautilus Live and on YouTube. Hope you'll continue to do so. You can see highlights coming out on YouTube, uh, featuring the best moments from all of our dives and on Instagram and TikTok, uh, as well as just great, uh, uh, really great content coming out for interviews from ship members. I know. Uh, uh, Sorry, Daniel, can I, can I? Guaranteed. Can I cut you off there? Please Sorry, do. We're on the bottom approach. And, yeah. Pay attention all right. to what we're doing here. Wow. You got auto head? Go auto head. Let's change these positioning sources. getting quite four beams. Should I switch over to the... I don't think you're going to be enjoying four beams for a while. Oh. Do, should I switch you can, over? You can switch over, okay. yeah. 
You just it's gonna come and go, huh? All right. It's just the nature of the beast. I'm going to reset this real quick. Yep. All right, good to go. Zoom in there, Amber. Alrighty. And can you turn off the lasers, please? Okay, and we'll go dark first. Alrighty, uh, let me pull out and see what that looks like. Alright, looks good, thank you. Okay, where are we going? All right, um, so we'll start making our way up slope. Um, get a little ship moving. Oh, you can put the lasers back on now that I've done white balancing. Thank you. All right, bridge now. Could we please move three zero meters at bearing two six two? Okay, you can have the floor back. <laughs> it's nice to see a Hercules in the Atlantic cam again. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Just like ah, oh, sure an old is. friend. <laughs> Good job. Good job, ROVs. An excellent job, front row, establishing us on station on the bottom. Here we go. Some signs of life already here at, uh, at the landing site. Yeah, some fish in Adeletta Cam. Just kind of hanging out. Just bobbing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we're in, we're in good spot. I agree. This is a good spot. It's got a lot of rocks. <laughs> <laughs> rock o'clock. It is rock o'clock. <laughs> I'll have to unearth this video I made about my geology undergrad. <laughs> you have my curiosity. Thinking rock here. 
Uh, if there's a safe place to sit down and uh, see if there's anything that's loose, yeah, that'd be great. But if it's not a good... Okay. Yeah, if it doesn't look like there's anywhere to put down, we'll uh, keep an eye out. Tasty morsels here, you want? Oh, so <laughs> many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they all look pretty, pretty angular. Um, just trying to get a sense of scale on these, uh, and uh, figure out what we got here. Well, it looks like some of these may be loose. Ah, there's a laser. Got it. Okay. Let's see, that, not all of these might be loose, so we might have to poke around a little. But like that one looks okay. Uh, that one next to it. Try not to get anywhere near those uh, larger boulders in the center of the screen. I just don't want to bump them. You want to bump them? Yeah, they look kind of big. I don't know if Herc would like that too much. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we can check out any of these uh, little ones here. Yeah, that one looks a little, oh, it's loose. Cool. Awesome. And so is the sediment. Yep. <laughs> Can you zoom in? Sure thing. Yeah, it was gonna be like 50-50 if these were stuck or not. Awesome. Like you've done this before, Robert. <laughs> like you've done this before. Oh, well, that's interesting. Is that too crusty? That does look a little crusty. Dump it? Uh, yeah, let's, it, it's a little bit um, flatter than I expected it to be. Okay, yeah, there's something maybe there or there. If we don't find anything suitable here, we can move on though. But, um, hmm. Like some chewy nougat, not the yeah. outside. <laughs> <laughs> don't let USGS hear that. <laughs> might be adhered. Um, okay. So. 
Ooh. Ooh. Got some movement. Mm. Oh, that one's looking better. That's got nougat. I think it does. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a beauty. Sure is. I am. Um, I'll let you can't. Oh, I'll let's come give, along. Let's give it a minute till beautiful we can stow it, and then I'll I'll answer. Well, you have any and all boxes available. <laughs> and there is our first sample of the dive. Oh, sorry, Robert. Sorry, I'm jumping. I'm jumping the sampling arm there. I'm not. Uh, Robert's uh, still getting eyes on the sampling box and gonna lay that beautiful pohaku, taken with the utmost respect, and consideration. Uh, I think it'll go in a small box. Okay. A. Can do. Picture breaking up. Oh no. Maybe that's too large. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers can watch on feed three. If you're currently watching feed one, you can watch. Yeah. Oh, oh there you go. Very nice. Awesome. <laughs> Beautiful. Down Robert Very nice. Thank wow. you. Yeah, thank you so much, Always Robert. Always amazing watching our pilots. All right, now we've got our first sample of the dive. <laughs> I guess we got to close the tray. You know, we got to close it first. But yes, I don't think this one will float away, though. I don't mm -hmm. think so. If it does, we have bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what sample number was this one? What are you talking about? Uh, this is sample 154040. Awesome. Thank you, Kukui. Thank you. Kukui, does that mean this is the 40th sample of the expedition so far? That is correct. Mm -hmm. All right. NA154, Ala Amwana Kai Uli, a beautiful angular pohaku, a roughly grapefruit or perhaps coconut size, mm -hmm. uh, coming to us and, and bringing this up ship side for further analysis. I'm gonna help Dr. Val and others uh, tell the story of this ancient seamount and mm -hmm. volcano. Super exciting. It is. And I think I am seeing uh, some manganese crust growth. Can't tell how uh, thick that is until I uh, uh, work on these a little bit on the ship, but uh, it's a good sign because that may tell us that these have been around for a while. Awesome. Just within minutes of uh, making contact with the bottom, acquiring the bottom, first sample in the box. Acquire the bottom, acquire a sample. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We do have uh, dive objectives, very clear dive objectives, which do include uh, sampling some of the geology, some of the rock in the area. Um, and, uh, We'll probably do that every every few hundred meters of elevation gain, Dr. Val, or um, just uh, opportunistically, or uh, pretty opportunistic on this on this one. Um, I mean, ideally, you know, every uh, 500-ish meters for shorter dives. This one's a little bit longer, so every kilometer, roughly, is okay. fine. But it doesn't have to be like clockwork because nature doesn't always work that way. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And sometimes you just come across a site where just the rocks are so good, you got to pick one up there. Got to pick one up. That's something I've never fully grown out of. So <laughs> I've always had rocks in my pockets growing up, apparently, and uh, now I'm uh, now I'm getting them off the seafloor. <laughs> now you have rocks in your ROV pockets. It's uh, indeed. It's an awesome journey you've been on as a geologist and scientist along the way, picking up the trombone. 
<laughs> many other interests and talents. Just yeah, been so impressed by your curiosity in general and your fish. knowledge in general. <laughs> like, Amazing. Yeah, the trombone started way before the geology did. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, Virginia was asking what we're looking for uh, for uh, good geological samples is, uh, you know, I'm looking for things that look like uh, they were part of a lava flow that broke off and kind of take on this uh, angular appearance uh, from some pre-existing stresses inside the rock as it cooled. Um, so pretty much angular, you know, 10 to 15 centimeters, ideally, but sometimes we go larger or smaller too, and that works out just fine. You know, we take what the seamounts can are willing to give us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, one of the things to, to look out for is if uh, uh, the rock we pick up looks a little too flat, there's a good chance that that's just uh, like uh, entirely manganese crust. Uh, and I'm looking for uh, the, the gooey goodness of uh, well, formerly gooey goodness of uh, basaltic rock inside that's of that right, crust. That's right. So. Well, good. I, I uh, manifesting that this uh, will give you all kinds of isotopic insights, uh, isotopic insights to. Uh, Hopefully. From this rock, when you get it, once you get it back to the lab. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping. Um, Sometimes it looks like a type of mantle that we call the focal zone or FOZO, and that can be really hard to uh, uh, distinguish from other hot spots because most other hot spots sample that, that weird little FOZO component too. So, all the hot spot tracks have some unique compositions to them, but they'll many of them also oh, have yeah. mixing lines Oh yeah, could you zoom on, zoom mm -hmm. in on zoom some in? of these? Yeah, that'd be great. Alright, zoom in. Oh, those are interesting. What are those? The I barnacles? don't know. They look hmm. weird. Oh, I wonder if there's a crab on the other side of that or something. No? That would be an awful long crab. Yep. I didn't yeah, notice. Be yeah. <laughs> yeah. Another one back there, too. Looks well, like there's they a few might of them. be barnacles. And there's a. Yeah, that looks yeah, like a sea either. cucumber. <laughs> We're sure it's a sea cucumber, right? <laughs> yes. I actually haven't no got a look at it, but yeah. No uh, that is interesting. There are definitely deep sea barnacles. Um, interesting. I've never seen barnacles quite like this, but they're, they, you know, barnacles are something that are seen all pretty much globally. But yeah, no, that looks like a barnacle to me. That's fantastic. Awesome, thank you. Wow. <clears throat> um. Cool. Looks like there's another one over there on the left too. There's a couple of these. Yeah, there's a, there's a few of them in this area. Ooh. They're kind of big, aren't they? What is that? Yes, please. It's not an aridic gorge. It's got a no, sea No, it looks like it's a stalked crino. Oh, no, it's a. It looks like a skeleton with uh, yeah. crinoids and a several cucumber. I don't know if that's a, a sponge. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a sponge. sponge. Wow. Really? I think it's a sponge with several crinoids on it. And another barnacle. Oh, there's a coral. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, wait, the, the little white thing on the bottom? I yeah. think that was a Walteria sponge. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a little that snail. That was a snail. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. What's the snail doing so down there? So deep. Oh. I heard, I saw some of these in the previous dive report um, that we did. I think it was oh, uh, the second, the second yeah, dive that we did. And uh, there's a, I don't know if this is the same gastropod they saw, but. Are you moving already? Uh, he completed a move, so I mean, we're inching along a little bit, but we're still mm -hmm. in front. Okay, can we zoom in? Okay, zoom in. Wow. Wow, that's really pretty. Yeah. Wow. Beautiful. So that's almost iridescent, oh, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing. Oh, and in Analanda, you can see we've got a, I think that's a, All right, going wide. might be a cusk eel following us. Oh, yeah, an Adelaide cam. Or, no, not a cusk eel. All right, wow, that's go. awesome. Thank you for that. I think we need to do some fish flashcards in the lounge. I more. know. <laughs> I was getting better at them, and then we did those, uh, the shipwreck dives. Not complaining, but I forgot some of the fish already. Uh, learn it on the fly, that's what we gotta do. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I'm looking at this image search of deep sea barnacles and there's so many different like morphologies and colors here. Oh yeah, and they they live in so many different niches of the the deep sea world. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like the manganese crusts are pretty thick here, which is Kind of, kind of give me the sense that this, this might be another Cretaceous seamount mixed in with a little Hawaii. <laughs> like, uh, there, this is near the intersection point of uh, an older hotspot track in the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, and uh, uh, that's that's partly what we can do here is uh, sort out what belongs to what hotspot. And yeah, I can get a sense of that from some field clues, but really the diagnostics are uh, uh, the geochemical work. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Look at all those rocks. Mm -hmm. Just look at them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Can you get a move going? Yeah, uh, I think Atalanta is moving pretty slowly, but it is going to get pretty steep again, so um, maybe these incremental moves might be best. Sounds good. Sako has a possible ID on that snail we saw. Oh, excellent. Uh, one possibility is Gaza snail or maybe a tumbling uh, snail. Oh, those tumbling snails are so what cool. That? What is that? Oh, oh. Well, that's a tumbling snail. <laughs> Speaking of cool. Interesting. Tumbling snail. Oh my god. No, it really does. That's, that's, you, I see those regularly and they what? just, they do that. I have no idea how that's, that's useful. <laughs> how are they oh not gosh. dizzy? It lets, yeah. them, it lets them run away real quick. Holy wow. I wonder, I wonder how they got their name. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Me. Me. What are those under the, the yeah, thank the you. Wow. That was a good catch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. I want to say that squirrel. We'll play. Oh. Are these egg cases? I don't know. Sponge? Okay. Hydroid? There's like there's, a couple things. there's a really small glass sponge right in the left yeah. hand, right hand corner. Are the sponges like taking over the coral here? I'm or is that all sponge? I don't know if I mean it's got sponge. little wispies coming off right, of it yeah. too. Which is why it's throwing it me. It looks like two different things, but it could all be the same, right? I think those may, those may be hydras because you can see like the filamentous um, tentacles coming off of it. Is that? But I don't oh, know what it's growing right. on it. Or if that's just the hydroid itself. I thought the hydroids are usually kind of that greenish brown color. They usually come in a bunch of different colors, okay. I think. Yeah, we got to um, get moving. We got to stay out. Okay. Yeah, okay. We got some August, images. Thanks. Thank you. Right, out. Yeah, no worries. Oh, there's a guy right there. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Atalanta should be staying still here. If you, I don't know if you wanted to check that out. What are you checking out? They're right, it just passed to the bottom. Um, he just went off screen at the bottom. Might have swam away already. Oh, there was a fish. Yeah. Oh, there oh, is. Sure enough. Good eye. Ooh. Yeah. All right, can you 
Benjamin. Benjamin. So is that an eel or is that an eel-like fish? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question, isn't it? Eel. I want to say it's an is. eel-like yeah. eel -like fish. You can see uh, the peck fins on it. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. That's what I need to look for. It's mm -hmm. got a little Muppet face. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or maybe it isn't. We mean I that in the kindest way, oh, little buddy. Actually. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> poor thing. Ow. Yeah. <laughs> Bonked his nose. <laughs> I can sympathize with that. <laughs> same. <laughs> Very much same. Cool, Very nice. That's cool. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Great spot, Catalina. You can see a little bit of columnar jointing in that uh, bit of basalt flow that we're moving past. Oh my goodness, for a second I thought you were talking about the fish and I was like, what is the columnar joint doing in a fish? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, big purple oh, sea cucumber. Oh, another. Wow, this is, this is the biology portion of the dive, isn't it now? <laughs> That's cool. Hey, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. Just keep both of us I'm entertained. about it, yeah. <laughs> it's fantastic. Did you see that guy down there? Yeah, that's cool. In yeah, no, if, if, you've, if you've got the availability to zoom, that'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah, yeah. You got some room. You're good. <laughs> Science chat is asking for maximum zoom. <laughs> 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 Actually, I was <laughs> written an older message, but I'm sure she'd appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. All right. That's so cool. I am zooming in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's so oh, yeah. Just that snack. is so purple. Mm -hmm. And it's got yeah. that sort of frill around the edges. It yeah. actually reminds me a lot of the um the swimming sea cucumbers, but I don't that's not what I don't think that's what this one is. It's, no, it doesn't um, look like one of those. Um although it's coming up off the sea floor a little bit, which is kinda oh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> I've seen that a couple it's times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think there's a whoop, wrong one. Wow. <laughs> I've seen these sometimes us. come up and they'll start like um, undulating in the. Yeah. Just to elaborate, yeah. Yeah, I do. Really is on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. Oh, interesting. It does have the... So one of the things that I was found out is that um, those little clear, very difficult to see sort of um, like papillae that are on them, there's um, on synalactidids, there are three lines of those. So that, that is a pretty key factor in determining that, that that one is a senile acted, which um, it does also look like some of the pictures of Palopatidae and Gallifluria. Um, so that's convenient too. But yeah, no, I've seen um, Palopatidae uh, swimming, actually. They'll, <laughs> they'll pick up and they'll swim like a flatfish. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that why they're yeah. kind of doing crunches? <laughs> 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 but with all they eat. But, you know. Touche. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we oh. get to move on? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Do that. Mm -hmm. Bridge now. I think I have a new favorite animal on these deep sea dives. And I think it's the tumbling snail. Tumbling snail for the win. Yeah. That was a good one. And it just right on cue, too. Uh -huh. They're obviously yeah. quite clever, so. Heard its name and went for a tumble. Zoom in, Amber? Yeah. I can't hear you, Robert, if you're talking to me. Can we zoom in? Okay. Is that like.
like an old piece of sponge or something? Hmm. That might be. And stalk. Not a whale bone. Yeah, that's we were collecting a bunch of uh, beaked whale jaw bones on the couple of cruises ago. <laughs> Picked up like it's six of them, I think. Yeah. These are not. But. Yeah, it looks like there are a few skeletons around here. Yeah. Okay. One wide. Oh, this is beautiful. If you are just tuning in, we are on the sixth dive of Ala'a Moana Kaiuli Expedition NA-154 on the exploration vessel Nautilus. We're on an unnamed seamount, previously unexplored, unmapped, unexplored seamount, uh, about 2,500 meters deep. Mm -hmm. Just moments ago, took our first sample of the dive. Beautiful geological sample, rock. Can we zoom in there? Mushroom coral? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Yeah, this is all oh, very cute. cute. Yeah. Oh. Already it's getting treated to some massive. awesome biology. Yeah. Oh, and it's got a small one. Oh, no. That's just its other polyp. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> wow. Very That gorgeous. one's a fairly delicate pink compared to some of the others we've seen right. that are much yeah. brighter. Mm -hmm. Love the mushroom coral. Yeah. Such beautiful beings. Yeah. The abundance of the kaiuli. Gosh, they are really beautiful up close like that. It's a nice spot right on the corner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Corner lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> corner view office. Must be doing yeah. well. All right. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you for that, Zoom. Going wide. Also, Dr. Bell, I think uh, we were doing some research on that fish we saw, and it might be an eel. So really? You were right. Yeah. Oh well, eel. I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to eels. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't have any idea either. So. <laughs> it looks like that cusky eel is still following us. Oh. I'll say I thought it was yeah. an eel just so I can say I was right one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You too, Dad. Yes, sir. <laughs> no, when it, com when it comes I'm to learning. when it comes to fish, I'm sort of one of those uh, broken clock, to right every now and again sorts of mm -hmm. things. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, this is a great view. I love seeing these giant pohaku. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. chaotic, this landscape. Yeah. Which yeah. kind of goes along with the hypothesis that this is a uh, uh, part of an old uh, collapsed uh, flank. Mm. Yeah. And I, th I think that fish that was following us in um, Atalanta's view was actually a, an aphidiform fish, which is pretty cool. And I'm trying to tell from the manganese crusts, although this is easier said than done, trust me. Um, it looks like this might have been some sort of a collapse that happened a long time ago because I'm not seeing a whole lot of evidence for like fresh rock faces here. Mm. But there's a lot that I can't see too, so that, that's, uh, that's, that's not going to be anything definitive. Dr. Val, you, you, I think you described it as kind of a chaotic scene. Lots of uh, lots of broken up pieces of rock. Of uh, all different sizes. All different sizes. Mm -hmm. This uh, kind of not very uniform in nature, and and this you think is potential evidence that this is uh, this is where we saw that sort of fall off, this sort of caving. Possibly, yeah. It looks like a tallest pile, um, except. Uh, well, not except it's the tallest pile that has some really large rock fragments in it, and that's that's a pretty uh, pretty high energy environment that does that. So, you know, it, it's so far making sense with the story we were uh, thinking about just looking at the bathymetry earlier today. 
At this point mm -hmm. in the dive, are we already out on that cliff face or are we still making our way up? Um, we're kind of on the edge of it, like right on the rim. So this this is a ridge that we're following up here. Um, but uh, yeah, if we're, if we're looking into it a little bit, yeah, it's, it's very possible that we're just barely oh, seeing the edge of the fish. debris field. This is the same guy. Yeah, that same is, that is fitted. Or wants to be friends with us. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, 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 from up in the Atalanta cam, mm -hmm. came down to say hello. Thanks, friend. Mm -hmm. Nice to have company. Would it be possible to zoom? Yeah, zoom in. Oh, there's his eyes. <laughs> what's, the, what's the potential ID on this one? Um, I think it's an aphididae fish. Um, oh, wow. Hi. No disrespect, he's really cute, but that's a potato head. A potato yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 oh, you so shamed him, Catalina. <laughs> that's the <laughs> second <laughs> dog and bonk we've him. seen. <laughs> I, oh. Okay. All discombobulated. No. Poor thing. <laughs> oh, oh this okay. is the deep sea, folks. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So much diversity of life, such incredible adaptations already. So many beautiful pohaku rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, this mm -hmm. high energy landscape from millions, millions of years ago. What a treat to be down here with all of mm -hmm. you again. Yeah. Making my evening. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Oop. Sorry, buddy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oop, catch he's right. over the... Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. He's going to get startled. Ah. <laughs> Swim away. Oh, there he's making go. eyes. He says, oh, go. it's okay, Catalina. I forgive you for calling me potato. <laughs> 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 it was a, lo a loving potato head. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Larry. Bye-bye, <laughs> 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 friend. These are those uh, aggressive, aggressive features, aggressive behavior that pe uh, the Internet's so worried about. Mm -hmm. These uh, the fish so. often just from right up and give us a snuggle on the sea floor. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but they definitely like uh, coming on board. Oh, oh, oh what anemone. do we have here? Anemone, anemone on the left. What's under the lasers? Is that an old no fish? No idea. Yeah. yeah, right in the middle there. Is that something? Interesting. Let's kill it. It's got some weird deposits below it, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think Honestly, it reminds me of an acorn worm, but it's oh, the yeah, largest acorn worm, acorn worm yeah. I think I've ever seen. Oh, it's definitely wow. alive. It's not a carcass. Yeah. Huh. No, um, yeah, the head looks like acorn worm. Yeah, yeah. so, yeah, acorn oh. worms are these oh, kind of unique um, organisms. Let me let me pull one up for you. Is that what this is? Are we IDing it? That's as my... That? Yeah, just from the head. That, the head part definitely yeah. looks like it. Cool. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, now I'm seeing, I've, I've seen, I've, we've been on this dive for how long and I've already seen two things I've never seen before. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> awesome. It's big too, huh? It is it big. Is. I feel like the one I saw before, Robert, was like a uh, darker purple. It looks scary though, Catalina. Mm -hmm. Don't uh, call it any names. <laughs> I won't tell them. Oh, they're a, yeah, that's why I can't find it. They're um, a hemichordate. Hmm. So they're in a... Interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So this is an interesting behavior. Is it like sleeping? Is it trying to disguise itself? Is it hiding from us? Uh, I think, honestly, last time I saw one, it was just uh, hanging out there. Uh, they just, they eat sediment, um, is my understanding, and so they will just kind of... I think there's some good evidence for that. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it is a chordate. It's an actual worm. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I guess, why would we call it a worm if it wasn't an Hemichordate, actual worm? class of invertebrates. 
Um, Spineless. Yeah. Trying to find out more information. But they are... They're pretty unique right. organisms. Very, I think they're pretty important for recycling nutrients. Just like um, worms on land. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful anemone. Mm -hmm. So uh, our, our uh, onshore friends are telling us that a uh, mushroom coral we saw a little bit ago uh, could possibly be pseudoanthemastus or mm -hmm. pseudoanthemastus-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so hopefully we'll get um, the, the person who uh, suggested that idea will be on science chat a bit later, so we might be able to hopefully hear a little more detail about that. Awesome. Yeah. So incredible, making so many new discoveries. Here we are on an unexplored seamount, previously unseen, unmapped seamount in the furthest reaches of Papahanaumokuakea, seeing Kanaloa in mm -hmm. whole new lights. Yes, mm. awesome. new lights. We oh. zoom in. And another worm. Another, I believe this is a, well, I think it's a sea cucumber. Yeah. Oh. Just covered in sediment. It's just totally camouflaged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, a super well. attractive one. <laughs> 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 it's We're very not judging you, sea cucumber. Mm -hmm. We're not judging you. It's not, it's flourishing. Covered in sediment the way that I get covered in manganese crust after mm -hmm. cutting rocks open. <laughs> living, uh, living your best lives, both of you. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awesome. Very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm Encrusted totally digging this dive so far. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we appreciate the, the childlike wonder and, and excitement of this exploration that all of our viewers are sharing with us online, but no, we don't just cruise around poking things. <laughs> um, we're actually quite, quite careful, quite respectful. We have sampling protocol that we follow. We have uh, mm -hmm. limitations on what we can take, and we recognize mm -hmm. we are in the sacred waters of Papahanaumokuakea, the, the deepest realms of Po, and, and uh, these creatures are our ancestors, the first mm -hmm. inhabitants of of the Hawaiian Islands, and just yeah. amazing to see them thriving here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of these life forms can, are all uh, intertwined and actually spoken of in our genealogical chants. So yes, we prefer not to go around poking things. <laughs> and you know, it kind of just speaks to a greater theme that we should all try to follow and the principle is that we should just respect all life, no matter if it's a encrusted sea cuke or, <laughs> um, you know, a puhi, an eel. Mm -hmm. A potato head puhi? Uh, yeah, <laughs> a potato head, <laughs> a skittish potato head <laughs> ea fish. Mm. Absolutely. Even the pohaku, the pohaku themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I really enjoy about working with, getting to work with Dr. Val is just the, not only the deep love and joy and, and curiosity or, around the science, but just the appreciation for how ancient and how sacred these uh, volcanoes are and, and all of these rocks representing a story that, that uh, dates back millions, tens of millions, sometimes over a hundred million years. And yep. It's... Uh, such a such a privilege to uh, to get to study and learn in this library uh, in the depths of the ocean, and especially for someone like me, just getting to hear from all of these very knowledgeable explorers. Okay, so the substrate is showing signs of uh, being in place here. So we might be looking at a uh, yeah, I'm seeing cross sections of some large pillow basalt. So we're definitely looking at something that broke off here. Okay. Mm. I love hearing you kind of help us uh, un unfold the story in real time, just from uh, you know, quick, this, uh, quick, this quick tiny references. little track we make. Yeah, this yeah. is fantastic. So I was seeing some kind of radial fractures in a few places, and when you see something sort of circular like that, that sort of angular going in, that's what the pillow. Uh, you're basically looking at a cross section of a pillow basalt flow. Okay, okay. And that's and that's uh, very 
that, that's how we get those angular rocks that we like. It's yeah. uh, pieces that broke off it's or something off like of that. that. Okay. Yeah. And it looks like it's crusted over. So yeah, this if this is indeed a collapse, it would happen a really long time ago. Like before there were ever humans. <laughs> way before. <laughs> it, yeah, it was our, uh, before. our, our uh, ancestors in deep time. That's right. <laughs> Amazing to think there were so many creatures roaming the Earth uh, over a hundred million years ago. Life, life on Earth is uh, thought to have started, I think, nearly four billion years ago. Formations, the making of the Earth, uh, you know, uh, closer, closer to five. How, how old is the planet, Val? You should, you know that. Uh, like four point three or so. Oh. It's uh, about four point, uh, four point six seven and change. Uh, yeah. Depending on how you estimate it. Yeah, fascinating. 4.567. Fascinating. And humans have really only been here for such a tiny fraction of that time. Such a, yeah. Just uh, seconds uh, uh, relative to uh, many of these other deep sea life forms. Uh, so just fascinating to um, sort yeah. of travel, not just back, not just into the deep ocean, but almost back in time in a way. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, oh, very much back in time. Pretty special. Yeah, four point five six seven. I skipped a digit there initially. Mm. So, oh, bad on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my words haven't been working too well today. So maybe they'll be better tomorrow. It's approaching. Yeah. It's approaching midnight. Yeah, and it's just been one of those days where I've had a little trouble getting the words out properly, and those those come around every now and again. Absolutely. So, probably just need to sleep. Yeah, you zoom in. I'm thrilled that before we get to go to sleep, we we did get uh, about an hour. Or we will have gotten just about an hour here. Ooh, nice oh, spot. Uh, oh, nice nice spot. Oh, another of the paranthomasis. Oh, no or way. It's so tiny, this one. Oh, oh I love wow. it. Yeah, and it's that uh, more muted pink again. Mm -hmm. Do you think this might be a distinct species that we're looking at? You know, I'm not positive. Um, uh, some of those characteristics can be really important, such as color, but, um, you know, I'd, I would have to, I, yeah, I'm not sure. We'd have to no worries. wait for a specialist on these particular mushroom corals. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm just yeah. going to throw questions. No, it's <laughs> great. It's a great question. Very well could be. Yeah. I, it's mm -hmm. just a baby. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's always a curiosity because one of the things that we tell Geology 101 students in the lab is don't rely completely on cover, uh, color. Uh, for an ID of a mineral when we're in that that unit mm -hmm. because the, it's it's not as diagnostic as you would think for most materials for some it absolutely is but you can get different colors of quartz uh, you know different uh, you know oh, we got more barnacles down there different parts of like the plagioclase solid solution can have different colors uh, are those yeah. more of these barnacles um, Zoom in again. looks like it yeah I think so a big one. Wow. It's open. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's huge. That is massive. Oh, wait, it's two. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah right. Still very large, but yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Deep sea wow. barnacles. That's unreal. Yeah, That's barnacles awesome. are not something that, I mean, we, we, great. we've seen Thank the little you. mini ones on some other expeditions. But it's just not, you know, we're so used to seeing them like at docks and on ships, you know, mm -hmm. right, right at the water line. Oh yeah, no, there's something that. Oh, sorry. It it just seems it, it's a it's a little bit incongruent sometimes to think of them as a deep sea uh, deep sea animal too. Yeah, there's something that have developed all sorts of mechanisms of staying. Of I mean, barnacles can grow on whales. Some barnacles will yeah. eat wood. It's uh, in the deep sea. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Also, is this another one of those sponge stalks? I think it is. Looks like it. Maybe we'll find some living ones uphill. Stock. Yeah, that's cool. This is pretty interesting. So, Dr. Val, do you have uh, do you have students this semester uh, back at University of Maryland? Um, I I, I don't teach at the moment. You're not teaching at the moment. Um, yeah. Uh, Just get to focus on the rocks. <laughs> Postdocs are uh, generally uh, not uh, required to teach. Awesome. But I have I have taught um, like plenty of intro labs and petrology labs and stuff like that as a as a grad student. Well. At the moment, I'm just trying to get my own work done. <laughs> <laughs> 
I know that's more than a full-time job, but uh, yeah. be some lucky students when, uh, whenever you do, if you do uh, decide to. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Take on some geology students, some young learners. I, I, I do have one PhD student that I'm uh, co-mentoring right now, and uh, she's she's working on some. Uh, uh, she's doing some tungsten isotope stuff on the Hawaiian hotspot, and uh, you know, it's a very challenging pro a project because tungsten is not the easiest element to deal with uh, as, as far as uh, like processing samples go. It's, it's, there's not a lot of it in, the, in silicate rocks. Uh, we haven't quite figured out um, why we can't get uh, complete yields and chemical separation, so there's always a little bit of tungsten that's lost. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge to analyze well, too. So, so when you're mentoring other, uh, you know, young, young researchers, are you always like, come on, stick with the lead? Is he, it's just going to be easier to work with, or do you just say it? Um, no, they... Um, are there reasons for, uh, for well, this, examining this the tungsten? In? Yeah, there's a whole story there that we're trying to unfold. And uh, uh, it's, it's a relatively new isotope system as applied to silicates. It's been used with uh, meteorites for mm -hmm. quite a while, though. But it's, uh, it's a challenge in many ways, because uh, in order to use it in a terrestrial setting, um, you have to be able to uh, uh, measure the ratio to an extremely high degree of in. precision. Yeah. Oh, awesome. For that, you need a fair amount of tungsten, <laughs> right, and sure. you need it very, very clean right. once you separate it out of the rock. And that means that you're often working with these really huge digestion sizes, like, like sometimes, sometimes a good order or two of magnitude more than we do for uh, most of the other isotope work that we do. And that that scales exponentially in difficulty. So, the bigger your sample you get, just like square the difficulty level. Oh boy. So she's doing a great job with it though. And I, I know it's it's hard work. It tries your patience. You know, and for very data driven people that can be a really difficult thing when a sample mm -hmm. doesn't work on you mm -hmm. after all of everything you put into it. Right. You know, it gets to me too because I work on that system as well as a, a bunch of other ones and yeah, it, it it frustrates me a lot too. And I'm trying to find some stuff to make that chemistry a little bit more uh, well behaved and and, you know, we're getting there. Okay, can we zoom in on that? Nice. Yeah, geochemistry can be a challenge some days. Some months. This is cool. This is looking like... It's a very delicate coral. Is it an octocoral? I believe so, yes. Um, Looks like a bamboo but it's Oh, you see the black nodes? Yeah. Great, because Ooh. I, oh. yeah, there we go. Is this a... That makes sense to me. Is this something that you want to sample? Um, I don't believe so. Bamboo corals are pretty common. Okay. Um, we, we've, and, we've sampled and at enough. And at these depths. Um, uh, yeah, I mean... Another snail. Another snail. Oh, it is another snail. Is it a tumbling? <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> Jump. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, uh, bamboo corals are not on our list okay. of priority sampling, so. No worries. Mm -hmm. well, that's cool. It looks like yeah. there's a small snail on it. Yeah, it yeah. does. And the, another one right. in the background. Wow. <laughs> Do snails eat corals in some settings? Could. Hmm. Why not? I'm actually not familiar. I'm not that familiar with snails. There's definitely some that like bore holes into like gastropods. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They they That's can totally do all right. sorts of things. Uh, Asako says it's uh, not a tumbling snail. Oh. This one or the other one? Uh, the one <coughs> we're looking at right now. Ah. Uh, okay. <coughs> so, um, in the general world of snails, they can, in fact, eat corals. But it is, I am not certain if this one will eat corals. So, <coughs> very cool. Mm -hmm. Good eye. Awesome. That's why we got some great pilots. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Awesome. That's fantastic. Right. Great, thanks. Mm. 
Awesome. Man, the rocks are such a mess here. <laughs> it's kind of what I was hoping to see with that uh, with, with that structure we're on. Yeah, pretty beautiful. Mm-hmm. Feel fortunate to have gotten this time. Uh, you know, I had a little bit of a trip down through the blue water to uh, to get onto the seamount, but uh, it's really been a treat since uh, since arriving, acquiring this ridge, and already learning a lot. Yeah, so you're seeing some pieces of. Uh what look like uh, fractured pillow basalt flows um, surrounded by all sorts of talus, which are just, you know, these loose pieces of rocks that are kind of scattered everywhere. We got something coming up right here. Ooh, a pernoid question mark. Oh, good eye. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to stop, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're out in front. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, can we get a quick zoom on that, and then we can move on? Can you zoom in? Oh, Sorry. yeah. Awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah, look at those small polyps. Mm -hmm. I'm making a mess. <laughs> that's all right. So that's okay. Great, thank you. Yeah, thanks for that. Thank you. Robert, it's a little hard to tell just from the Hurt camera view or the Atalanta cam, but uh, how steep does this slope feel it's that you're moving up? Pretty steep. Yeah. Pretty steep, yeah. Yeah, we're getting to the, the pretty steep section of it as well. Yeah, it looks like it. You would have a hard time going up this. Hmm. You know, I've climbed across the tallest pile before on land, not in the sea, and it's it's difficult. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. It's so it's not necessarily the safest call either. It anything scree on the bottom? Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a good question. That just might be that just might be my dialect. <laughs> no, like that's no geologist ever called the bottom stuff. Scree. I've asked that question before. I don't I, I don't have a very good answer for it. <laughs> Must be a hiker's term. <laughs> but you can have talus on land, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've climbed across a pile of so. talus on land and Yeah, it's a, it, there are safer ways to go about that. Which is don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a oh, that's sponge. Oh, a nice-looking sponge. Mm -hmm. Follow so. Can you zoom in? Oh, I think. Ah, uh, yes, please. Oh. That looks like a euplectalid sponge. I believe you are correct. I'm not sure if it's one of the target species. It looks though. a little bit different than the target species. Yeah. Okay. Though. So. But um. These are just so striking. Those they are the structures that they form. Absolutely. They're so beautiful too. That's the Calafacus, or that's the Bolosoma. Which one is this? Good or neither. Mm. I'm just saying words I heard before. Right. <laughs> Same. I was, I was very impressed with you. <laughs> So actually, if I was going to say, well, I probably shouldn't say any because... Oh, 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 oh. 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 Hey. Yeah, we're kind of up close and personal to that. Yeah, right on this clip face, really yeah. challenging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all good. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, every dive is different. Absolutely. One of the amazing things here. This must be a pretty good place for some of these uh, animals to thrive. <clears throat> yeah, it's really interesting. Um, 
Yeah, well, a you can see. Oh, bag. that's yeah. a wild yeah. looking. Yeah. Oh. Is that like, looks like, like a tattered cactus. Walteri or something? It looks like yeah. it's kind of like posing like a strong man. <laughs> can we zoom in? Sure. I can't get a lot closer. Oh, and there's that's like okay. a crinoid there too. That's awesome. Whoa. Oh, I think that's a ferreted sponge. Oh, yeah, we yeah. did. We saw one of those. Oh, yeah. Those are fun. <laughs> Honestly, I think those may be my favorite. They're pretty trippy. Like, um, it's, it's maybe it's the time of night, but I'm like, they remind me of lasagna noodles. <laughs> oh, oh no! Oh, yeah, going down the food rabbit hole again. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Don't make us hungry. We have no meal till breakfast, people. Yeah. Be nice oh, to we, me. We, okay, we there have? are always snacks in the yeah. fridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Fruit Loops. Kukui, besides the way it looks, what uh, what's what's so striking to you about it? Why do you why do you love these sponges? It's their translucence and kind of even though they're translucent, they're kinda of iridescent in a way to me, I feel like. Yeah. And it's their their morphology and how they produce these frill like um, these frill like frames, even though they're made of like glass spicules. Mm-hmm. I don't know how they do that, so it's that's pretty, pretty cool. It's a pretty cool structure, you're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, the morphology of those sponges is pretty impressive. For the record, I am st I am still finding Fruit Loops on the social deck. Oh my what? God. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Oh Come on. <laughs> no. What happened wow. there? I don't know. Like, there was Fruit Loops, and then there wasn't Fruit Loops in the container. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like... What random ones that one? I keep oh. spotting on the bottom floor of the county as a social tag. So for context, anyone listening. I think Zach found the fruit loop. So. <laughs> oh no. Now what's happening to these, to these rocks here, Val? This these look a little bit different than what we've seen. Huh? <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a moment over here. <laughs> the Fruit Loop moment. Mm -hmm. We're going a little Fruit Loopy in the, in the control van. <laughs> We've had a long few days. <laughs> it's about that somebody, yeah. somebody send some Fruit Loops up here. This for is us. what happens. That's why we can't have nice things. <laughs> That's why. true. Mm -hmm. oh, speaking, speaking of Fruit Loops, though, there is, there is a stash in the drawer on the top right corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, there it was. It was refilled. <laughs> <There was. laughs> oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Yes. Well, I did. I did see that the uh, the Fruit Loops dispenser had uh, been refilled this morning. <laughs> it's not Fruit Loops anymore. It's brand strawberries With, again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Special K. Yeah. Those, are Special K. K. Those are really good. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Is this um? <laughs> what we're looking at, Dr. Val, is this? Uh, you know, it's it doesn't seem like the same kind of talus. Is this just a function of the steepness of this slope that we're looking at? Sort of a what looks like almost a more intact face, in some ways. But thanks for getting me back on. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I don't want to. No, I, that's I fine. That's it, fine. Um, yeah, that, this could be some in-place uh, uh, wall rock here, and we're we're kind of looking at it in in sort of a cross section where we can see some of the jointing that uh, 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 that developed in the rock as it cooled. Kind of tells you it can, that can tell you like cooling directions and stuff. Uh, so I think we're seeing. Um, a lot of that. It's it's a little bit disorganized, but um, that that could be, just be the angle that we're looking at. So we might be looking at like the tops of of some uh, columnar basalts here. Interesting. So I'm seeing these sort of hexagonal like features. Right, right. Yeah, yeah and that's that's those. what uh, uh, columnar basalts look, oh. look like uh, from the top down. Mushroom. mushroom. Nice, another. Uh, yeah. yeah. One of those uh, <laughs> pseudoanthemastis, I think. Yeah, you can see what might be a bit of a pillow structure in there, too, but not very well defined. Catalina, on the sonar on the left, what's the what's the scale? Uh, those are 20 meter divisions. 20 okay. Meters. Thank yeah. you. And Sako and I are still talking a little bit about the tumbling snail, and she's telling me that uh, uh, the shells get that iridescent quantity uh, from being polished when they tumble around. <laughs> oh. oh. That's why they do it. They're just polishing yeah. their shell. That's cool. <laughs> Those guys, smart little buggers. Beauty is pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a lie. We're all beautiful. <laughs> oh, wow. That's beautiful. 
Oh, this is interesting. What an incredible Good. formation. I just yeah. want to climb yes. up through this valley. It just reminds me of the back of the valleys at home. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. Oh. But there'd be waterfalls and lots more trees and plants. Yeah, <laughs> lush greenery. I guess the whole thing orchids. is a waterfall in a way, but. Yeah. In a way. Oh, the orchids, yeah. Yeah, the, which kind of look miley. like corals, too. It's yeah. true. Oh, the orchid no? Similarities in nature. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, Quahivi mountain tops and ranges and how it looks like so many back at home. Um, yeah, one of our good friends, they repel a lot. So we went a couple times and. I mean, it's just gorgeous. Some of the spaces on our islands that are still so raw, mystical, lush. Sometimes just minutes from town. Yeah. Some yes, reason. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Look right overlooking. Yeah, that's Did when. It, oh, go ahead. No, please, go no. Or uh, it, it, um, what Mahi was saying, how, and what you were saying, Daniel, how this reminds you so much of what you see on land, I find it um, beautiful. Like a lot of times in Hawaiian culture, you see these sea counterparts and these terrestrial counterparts with each other. Mm -hmm. And that, ju that just reminds me like everything is how it's just so interconnected and that duality of that. Right. Yeah, Ew. keep moving on. That's right. Ew. Yep. That's right, Kukui. Yeah, we're looking at some big stuff and that's had some big breaks off of it. Yeah. <laughs> One of our viewers had just mentioned that tumbling snails are the perfect animal. Hey. All right. Hey. Oh, that is it. <laughs> the perfect life form. There you have it, folks. Mm -hmm. It is just not snails correct. trying to be beautiful, just, yeah. falling all yeah. over the place. It's not that different than people, right? They kind of like people. <laughs> Clumsy. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that might be an isotope story, so we might have tumbling mm -hmm. snail references as well, Val. In okay. Our, in <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. Ooh, we've got more. more oh, we've got oh. some different corals hey. over here. Hey. Whoa. Whoa. Can we have? get a zoom on some of those oh, if possible? Oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is great. Okay, so what you're seeing in the bottom right corner is actually a dike. That's an intrusive uh, That's an intrusive feature. So we are inside the volcanic plumbing of the volcano. We wow. are? Whoa. Look at all of this light. You heard it form. first wow. here, folks, from Dr. Val herself. So amazing. Look at that these. is wild. Wow. Looks like we have a few generations of things here. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is gorgeous. Oh, is that an urchin by that stocked sponge? Um, you're talking about this? Yeah. I think that's a, that might be a skeleton. I think that's another sponge. Is that a Walteria sponge? We might be looking on it like straight on or slightly oh, different, but yeah. Or just like a small circular sponge oh. with a similar form. Wow, uh, that's amazing. Yeah, and I think just above it there was even a there was a Chrysogorcha too. It'd be great to get a look at as well. Oh, awesome! Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, very fan shaped. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. In between looking at the Chrysogorcha and these this other biology, Val, I'd love to hear more about kind of what you just saw that kind of verified in your mind that this was we're looking at some of the volcanic plumbing here. We're looking inside. Uh, so what I could see in that corner there. Um, awesome. Can you zoom back out? Yeah. Yeah, you, you see a distinct uh, break in the rocks, you know, like like a gap. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you can see there's a little bit of an erosional boundary between these two. So it looks, that's one boundary, that's another boundary, and then you have this kind of ladder pattern yeah. here. Yeah, that's yeah. that's those cooling joints, except we're we're not seeing them from the top. We're seeing them on oh. the side. On the side, yeah. And th that tells me that uh, this is Can something that came in. Too? Yeah, it came in on uh, uh, came in through uh, existing rock, that's intruded fine. in. Yeah. And then uh, as as this little uh, dike or lens of magma cooled, it cooled from the outside of the edges mm -hmm. inward, and it develops those uh, those parallel structural wow. weaknesses as it cools and contracts and eventually you know if that gets exposed it can start breaking apart along those again giving us some of our nice angular rocks yeah yeah wow. exactly what we were hoping for awesome. i think i see a, a more complex dike structure over here too as well so potentially multiple episodes wow. or uh, could be could be the same 
uh, you know, part of that same dike system too. I'd, that's something I'd actually have to kind of look at in the field uh, to get a really good sense of. But we can't have, do that. You'd here. have to go down there yourself. Huh? I, I get a little, <laughs> I get a little squished up. Yeah. Yeah. It looks oh, like there's more. another one here too. Wow. I was hoping we get to see this today. Yeah. And right before we're headed to bed too. What good timing. Oh, time <laughs> flies, man. Yeah. We're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is magnificent. Oh. Amazing. We we understand if you need to spend some time with some other watches as long as you don't betray us. <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna have to go down and get a snack soon uh, at the end of watch because I am a little hungry. So. Fruit Loops. <laughs> I need something a little more substantial than Fruit Loops. You're right. An eDNA water sample. Ooh. Ooh Tui just oh. reminded me. Right. This might be a really great spot for it, if it's possible. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a great idea. Let's do it. Thank you, Kukui. Oh, we're we're spending a little guys. too much time ooing and aahing over here. <laughs> <laughs> There's science to be done, people. <laughs> Said mostly of so, myself. <laughs> no, there's so much down here. It's it's amazing. It really is. It is. Oh, yeah. I'm pleasantly surprised by what we're seeing. Uh, you know, the show that the biology mm -hmm. is putting on for us. Yeah. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. I think that's the first time I think I've seen a dike. Probably. In, in a while. Yeah. There's actually some in outcrop along the H3 on Oahu. If you ever find yourself out that way. Mm. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I think what we're about to see is Robert uh, give uh, a light tug on the 3D printed bingo mm -hmm. balls, and we're going to uh, yeah we're going to get an eDNA sample, take a water sample, in our five uh, liter Niskin oh, bottles. No, no, it's okay. I believe there's a 3D printer in the data lab. There is. Yep. We have 3D printing on board. We got it on the Nautilus. Comes in handy with some of our uh, 3D printing educational activities you can find on nautiluslive.org backslash education uh, in the curriculum resources. Check those out if you have a 3D printer at school or at home. You can print your own little miniature Nautilus, exploration vessel Nautilus. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, this makes me miss uh, my field mapping days, as brief <laughs> as those were. <laughs> so what are we going for? Um, anyone you want. Uh, uh, can you switch over to the other camera view? The skin rack. We'll start at the back. Mm. Sounds good. Number six? Yep. Awesome. There you go. I don't, I don't I see it. That's the problem it. with number six. I think I see it upright. I don't want to yank on it more because we'll just break it. So I think it probably went. I think it went. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to get a camera that will look over that whole rack. We don't have a good spot to put it. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's another coral. I think I that's just another saw coral we didn't see either. Um, is that a pernoid? Down here. It looks like there's a, a stocked sponge maybe down there too. Uh, I think that's some sponge or debris. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah, I but think yes. we might have blown that loose. That's fine. Yeah, there's pretty good diversity here. Yeah, yeah. this is really interesting. Can't complain about the geology either. Mm. I'm very place. happy with this site so far. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, great. Rennie has done us proud again. <laughs> yes, yeah, he has. Yeah. 
Absolutely, yeah. For all our viewers just now joining us, just now tuning in, uh, you've already missed a spectacular hour here on the seafloor on top of this, uh, or on a ridge line along the side of this unnamed, previously un unmapped and, and unexplored seamount in Papahanaumokuakea. It's our sixth dive of the Ala Amwana Kaiuli expedition. You're here with what many say, many people have told me, is the greatest watch of all time. <laughs> 12. Yes, ah. Uh, yeah. And this is not just any unnamed seamount. This is unnamed seamount number 17. Hey, ah. okay. Yeah, full respect, unnamed seamount <laughs> number 17. Yeah, there, there are a few of them in this, in this area. Uh, there's even one called unnamed along the uh, Northwest Hawaiian Ridge that is published with the name unnamed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, some so. seamounts just like to stay unnamed. It's just how it is. Yeah, there's some interesting seamount names out there. Um, fan favorites are often like Kick 'em Jenny and Kick 'em Jack. Yeah, of course. Yep. The Kick 'ems are great. Everybody loves the Kick 'ems. <laughs> but we are, we will be going through a watch change here momentarily. It is coming up on midnight here in Hawaii. We are operating on Hawaii time, even though we're very close to the international dateline. And mm -hmm. uh, it's almost tomorrow. You're going to, it's almost yeah. tomorrow. And, and <laughs> you, will, you will get to enjoy the incredible 12 to 4 watch. Uh, they'll take you through uh, the steep climb, and uh, I'm sure you'll see a lot of incredible things along the way. So mm -hmm. it's been my pleasure. This is Daniel Kinzer, Science Communication Fellow, signing off. Have a good night and enjoy exploration. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, yeah mahalo nui, Daniel. Yeah, mahalo mahalo nui, Daniel, for always yeah. orchestrating these wonderful dives and our wonderful yeah. conversation. Good night, everyone. Mahalo, ahui ho, until we meet again in the morning. Yeah. Hi, Mahina. Awesome.
All right, just let us know when we're settled in and we'll proceed. It's the midnight to 4 a.m. You're good. You don't have to <laughs> move that one shit. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, morning, evening. Uh, hi, Kara. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah. Sorry. Is that better or is that yes, scratchy? Yes, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night for you. Uh, we just switched over to the midnight to 4 a.m. watch, so I'm glad you're staying with us. Uh, so if we have time, we'll do a quick round of introductions, um, just so you know who's in the control van now. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, my name's Kara, and I serve as the Science Communication Fellow, so helping to share the science and make sure it's uh, accessible for all our different audiences. Um, when I'm not here on the Nautilus, I'm based in Guam, working at the Guam Coral Reef Initiative. And I'll pass that on to my right, uh, to Else. Thanks, Kara, Ali, and good morning, evening, afternoon, everyone. My name is Else, and I'm from a Pacific Island nation called Palau. Um, we're located on the western side of the Pacific, so I'm over here in the in the middle in Hawaii um, on this expedition. I'm here on the Nautilus as a supporting scientist. So that means I support um, a lot of all the different roles that are on board, uh, including Kara. Press the button. And okay. when I'm not on the Nautilus, I'm a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center. And really excited to be here with everyone on another exciting seamount expedition dive. Um, so with that, I'll pass it over to my right to our watch lead, Hans. Good morning, good evening. I'm Hans van Telberg. I'm a maritime archaeologist with NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. And for the middle watch, I'll be assisting the biology and geology team. Pashna? Muted? Yes. Uh, I am Upashana Ganguly. Right I am bit. from India, a deep sea biologist who is currently studying the evolution of deep sea corals uh, in, in the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And I'm the biologist for this watch. And I'm excited about this dive and hopefully we'll have a great time. Seems like it, what we're looking at here right now. Uh, hello, my name is Taylor Ann. I am the science manager and data logger on this watch. Uh, so I am logging all observations that we see on this dive. Um, come along for this deep sea exploration on a seamount that we've never seen before. Um, and I'll pass it on up to you, Mia. Thanks, Taylor Ann. I'm Mia. I'm serving as the navigator on this cruise. Um, it's my second time on Nautilus, and I'm happy to be here. Pass it on over to Dan. Hi, I'm Dan, sitting in the Herc chair. Short and sweet. You ready, Jake? Yeah, thank you, Dan, for that very long intro. Um, <laughs> my name is Jake Oden, and I'm from Eva Beach, Oahu. I currently reside in Hilo, Hawaii, and work at the Mega Lab there. And I'm really stoked to be here in the monument. And yeah, I'll pass it on. Mahalo. Aloha, my name is Jaina Galvez. I'm the video engineer on this watch. I am originally from Hilo, Hawaii. I currently reside in Seattle, Washington, where I am a filmmaker. Um, I'm very excited to be here as well. Thank you. 10 meters, 045, please. How about 050? Yeah, Roger. Right.
Would you like a zoom there? All right, thank you for all your introductions, everyone. Dan, um, can we have a zoom at the coral here? Uh, stand by. If you're curious to learn more about any of the people that just introduced themselves, you can find more information on the Nautilus Live website. Um, all our profiles are there, um, including uh, information about how we got into these different roles, advice for anyone interested in those fields, so um, definitely feel free to check that out. We are currently on an unnamed seamount, um, which uh, was mapped for the first time uh, very recently, and uh, it's located about 100 nautical miles north of the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge, making it the northwesternmost seamount in Papahanaumo Kuakea. Um, the summit is about 800 meters, and we're currently um, collecting some of our high resolution resolution imagery and some physical samples as we travel up along the uh, up along a ridge of this seamount. So um, pretty exciting because no previous dives have ever been conducted on this unnamed seamount. Yeah, when I was uh, when we were mapping this earlier today, uh, it had a lot of it varied a lot, quite a, varied quite a lot in terms of uh, depth. So it's interesting to see what it looks like. Ooh, very cool! Can you share a little bit more about like our particular pathway? If did that like stand out to you when you were mapping it, or? Um, are we like going up a really steep part of it? Yeah, so uh, the last crew, the last watch just went up a, a bit of a steep slope. We're gonna be uh, kind of going over a horizontal line. But uh, when I was talking to Val, she thought this might be, she wasn't sure. So she was talking about how different seamounts or areas have uh, kind of like a collapsed wall, but that's not the official term. Um, but it just looks so drastically different on the east side versus the west side of the on, of this seamount. Um, so yeah, I'm really interested to see what it looks like. And here we can see a very beautiful wall or rock face with a bunch of sponges and coral colonies. Uh, we can we have in the past couple of minutes seen some beautiful stock duplex telids. I think I saw a long ferried sponge in the background and there are several coral mm -hmm. colonies uh, and s from a distance we still haven't zoomed on the corals we will in a bit but uh, looks like there were some plexorid uh, sea fans and at, there were some fans that looked more like primnoids but we'll know more when we have a closer look and when the we were settling in a little before, we saw a big fish that was swimming by, and that uh, was the Acanthonus, or which is in, which has a very wonderful common name, which is the bony-eared ass fish. So that is a favorite of a lot of people. <laughs> so we were we did see it bobbing in and out of view a couple of times. I miss the fish. I'm sure we'll <laughs> see it again. Yeah, is that why everyone was going like, whoa? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see it again. It's dead. And for everyone who might have been tuning in to our previous dives, we are now back on our two-body system, which is um, ROV Hercules down at the bottom, and then uh, Atalanta supporting at the top with a bird's eye view. 
So we're back to the um, great image quality that we're used to. And we also have our two lasers back. So again, just a reminder, the two lasers are 10 centimeters apart or Let's four inches. Another 10, zero, four, five. For our friends yeah, who please. like the Imperial system of measurement. <laughs> So a good place to pick up a rock for waiting for the uh, ship. It does look like that. Uh, we can. Uh, Val said she had picked up one at the start of the dive, and then after waypoint two, we'll get another one. Those are nice and angular ones. Uh, is, uh, is it rock time now, or, or uh, I don't know we where already we collected are. one? Um, I guess I don't she know wanted one are. after waypoint two. Is that what she said? Yeah, between wait two, waypoint two and waypoint three, we'll get another one. So. Okay. She also uh, the dive plan also says about one uh, every kilometer. So I don't know. I don't know when they got the last one. So. Yeah. I. Let me see what sample number the last rock was. I'm trying to get the ship behind us here so I can um, <coughs> uh, get up tight when there was a very dense uh, area on the cliff there. Okay. Roger. Sounds good. As opposed to when we came in where it was very not dense. Uh, but to get up and uh, be able to zoom without um, struggling, I need the Atlanta behind Herc because otherwise it's pulling the tether around really hard and I can't, uh, if I try and zoom, it'll, you know, I uh, can't hold the vehicle still while we're fighting the tether mm -hmm. like that. So we're moving, uh, moving Argus that way to be behind her. Roger. Um, so sample zero four zero was a rock sample. Okay, that was, let me measure here. That was 75 meters ago, so not very far. <laughs> right, so we, we don't need one here. We'll get up to waypoint two, a little beyond, and we'll get another one. So as we're going up the cliff here, we want to keep uh, Atalanta behind Herc and uh, 20 meters off the wall there. It's a pretty significant wall. Uh, yeah, I don't have any autos on. That's going to that's going to come and go as cuz you, you don't have uh, four beams right now you only have three beams we're on the well it's we're on a vertical wall so no dvl they could have gone up where we were but it was boring that little outcrop there was uh some high density action. Yeah, it was really beautiful. So you see the little pink thing over there? I'm curious what that is. Okay. What was the Seastar. center, right, on the rock there? It's it's uh, more like uh, just underneath the laser. No, There's well there is there is something there. Yeah. That, but also this little pink. Oh yeah, this yeah, little yeah. Pink thing. Yeah, now I see it. Oh. Return of the sea star spotter, <laughs> Mia. The sea, the sea star stick is back. <laughs> the sea star stick. Well, that was a very what? Very dense rock face yeah. over oh, there. Oh, for the stick. Is that a brittle star right under the laser? I'm not sure what it is because the arms look too thin for a brittle star. Yeah, kind of straight, right? Yeah. 
But you the dimensions and the symmetry looks more like a brittle star again. Is that some dead coral that we see in the top left? Yes, yes, yes. We see some dead coral skeletons. The white one, uh, the yellow can be from a paragorgia. The white can be from a bamboo coral, but I'm not sure because I think I see the dark nodes there, but I'm not sure. But we do see a bunch of uh, co dead coral skeletons even more towards the right. That is definitely a bamboo coral skeleton lying horizontally within the rocks. So the nodes would still be present on a dead yeah, coral? Yeah, because it's a skeletal structure. Mm -hmm. The node, internode, mm -hmm. the protein and the uh, proteinaceous, the keratin black and the white. So that's part of the skeleton. Right. So when we see it on the coral, we are actually seeing the skeleton through the tissue. So ah, okay. So cool. Yeah, that's why sometimes it's very difficult to see the skeleton and we have to look at the base because there, at the base, there's uh, less tissue cover or sometimes there aren't any tissue material covering the uh, skeleton, so that makes it easier to spot. And the bamboo corals are an optocoral? Yes, yeah. yes. So far, mo so far on our watch, everything that we saw from a distance on the rock face, they were octocorals, there can be some scleractinians there, but we don't know yet. We'll have to get a closer look. There's okay. something red hanging, probably a nofuride. In the, right next to the, in the middle of the screen. Yeah, yeah, right now. We are very late. That is a beautiful yeah. sponge. That's a euplectelid, a stocked euplectelid. I would think in the genus uh, Sacocalyx. There's a small anthomastus on the top. It's wonderful how the sponge is hanging from that. Yeah, D have you um, been able to s like handle physical samples of these sponges before? Is the stock pretty um, like rigid and able to just stick off of um, structures like that? Yeah, the stocks aren't too rigid. I don't know exactly how to explain, but not too flaccid also. They're quite stiff. Oh, that's a beautiful view. So when, when you come up here, Jacob, when I'm close to the wall like this, you come up really slow. And yeah, don't make big gross movements because you'll... Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, you'll pull me away and what you'll... Uh, yeah, if we... If we Yeah. Yes, uh, Asako corrected us about the anthomastus. It is a pseudo anthomastus. And um, for our viewers, uh, oh, there are several of them. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, we have a whole team of people supporting um, us from ashore. We have a scientist ashore program, so um, Upashana Sako is one of those scientists, right, helping us uh, ID these corals. Um, and there's an ongoing uh, chat, so really, really valuable insight that they can provide. So just want to say thank you to our amazing onshore team. But sorry, go ahead, Upashana. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, definitely. They Very are beautiful. a great help and assistance to IDing because uh, there's so much to look at. 
That's a lovely. This, it's like wow. the pseudoanthomastids wow. are forming a line along the ridge. That and is really cool. Yeah, towards the right, there is a primnoid colony. We see chrysogorgids. Uh, that's a beautiful fan. Uh, whenever it's possible, we would love to have a zoom in on the different kinds of fans that we okay. are seeing. Okay, here? Yes. Right. Pick and one and circle it. Okay. And there are some bamboo corals a little to the left and right. Uh, corals everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> Such a beautiful rock face. I'm so glad we walked in and this is what we are starting our shift yeah. with. I love these like variations of kind of red and pink and orange. Yes. Is that an organism? Oh. Oh, that's. <laughs> is that an organism on the right side? It, on the, on oh, the rock? The yes. Corals?